Hello everybody and welcome to Learning with Chrono, Space Engineers Edition. Today we are going to be taking a look at the recently added pistons. Now the pistons were added in version 1.040 and they're specifically designed to move things up and down. Now in previous versions to move things up or down you had to use a complex combination of rotors pointed in different directions to combine their spinning into vertical motion. Extremely complicated and I'm very personally glad that they have added these pistons. The piston can be found in your toolbar config fourth from the top and third from the right in between the rotor and the artificial mass. It can be placed much like any other block and it takes up just slightly over two blocks of space. And the reason for that is because like the rotor the piston has two components to it. It's got the central piston and then the top piston part. These both have to be soldered before you can use the piston. The piston's functions can be accessed through any of its consoles found on two of its corners or on the top or the bottom. Taking a look at the functions themselves we can see the standard toggle block, turn them on or turn it off. We can name the piston whatever we would like we can show it on the HUD if we have an antenna attached. Then we have the reverse button, which is similar to the reverse button of the rotor. It actually takes the velocity and reverses it. Then we have the velocity, which controls not only which direction it goes, but how fast. The negative velocity will pull the piston into itself, and a positive velocity will push the piston out. Then we have the maximal distance, which extends a total of 10 meters, or the minimal distance, which goes as far as 0.0, .0 meters. 10 meters is as far out as it can go, and 0 meters is obviously the entire way in. If I hit the reverse button, we can see that its current position is going out, and then we can see that the piston is going up. If we allow it to go up the entire way, and then compare it to light armor blocks that we sit beside it, we can see that the piston extends up four blocks in height, which means that we can get an accurate understanding of exactly how tall these blocks are. If the piston extends 10 meters and it goes up four blocks, that means each block is two and a half meters tall. So this will extend two and a half times four meters distance. Now what can we do with the maximal and minimal distance settings? Well, say we have a setup like this, and we want to take that block and push it up to where it's just touching that block there. Now if we do some quick math, we know that the piston itself takes up two blocks in size, and then from here we have one more block for the block that's there. We have two blocks of empty space, and another block here for the top mark. Now that's two blocks plus four blocks. So if we let the piston extend its entire way, it will reach the very top of these blocks here. And if we just leave these settings as is, and we tell it to extend, the piston, no matter how slow it's going, will continue to extend until it reaches the top of its trajectory. And as we can see, it will travel through pretty much anything it needs to travel through to get there, destroying anything in its path and itself if necessary. So here we have the same setup again, but this time let's set the maximal setting. Now thanks to us knowing that the piston extends 10 meters, we know that the b one single block is 2.5 meters. So we know if we want this block to travel two blocks up to touch that block, we only have to go five meters. But if you notice, the top of the piston is ever so slightly above the top of the second block. So what we have to do to get it to work properly is set the maximal distance just below five meters. Now I have found that 4.8 meters is perfect. So if I set it to 4.8 meters, I hit reverse and back up, we can watch it go up to just where it touches the top block, but doesn't damage either of them, despite how it looks. Now the minimal setting is exactly the same, except inverted. It's how far in the piston will go. 
So let's say, for example, we want to take that block and only move it down one block. We have to go into the settings, and we have to do a little bit of quick math. We know that 2.5 meters is one block, and we know that the maximal distance right now is set to 4.8 meters. So what we need to do is kick it down 2.5 meters. So that puts it at 2.3 meters. And if our math is correct, and we hit reverse, the block will go down and match exactly the top of the second block. And it does. Now you may have noticed the tube door on the top of the piston. Does that mean that this can act like an extended tube? Yes. Yes it does. But does this mean that, say, for example, if we extend this piston the exact right amount to where it touches that cargo container, we would be able to access that cargo container through the back of the piston? Well, let's do that. I have this already set up to go its full 5 meters. And we will see that once it extends to 5 meters like it should, it will be just touching. But if we go to the back here and try to, say, put these construction components in our small cargo, small cargo container, we see that we can't. So the answer to that question is no. However, we can connect a connector to a piston or, say, several pistons in a row to create a group. And we can see in the interface that we can create piston groups just like we can with every other block to create a telescoping docking port that can extend out pretty much as far as you could possibly need and still connects the entire way from the top to the bottom as if you had put tubes there. The piston is also available for the small ship. It works pretty much exactly the same except on a smaller scale. If we t check its control panel, we can see that it will only extend a maximum of two meters. And if we do our tests like we did before, where we piled up a bunch of blocks to its side, we can see that from top to bottom, it takes up six blocks. So it's the same exact ratio as the larger pistons which tells us that these small blocks are exactly half a meter tall. So now I hope you have a new understanding and respect for the brand new piston in Space Engineers. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.